Excellent. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Brendan Sieco. I'm the founder and CEO of QZAM. Uh, today, I'm going to speak a little bit about how augmented reality and other technologies are transforming the world of art and culture. To start with a little bit of a quote, one of my favorite VCs and technology futurists, how can we not quote Mark Andreessen in saying software is eating the world. No sector is immune to the disruption that's taking place, including cultural institutions. And so if software is eating the world, we like to think that culture is feeding the world. We have an opportunity to use this technology to change the way people interact with art and culture, the way that they produce art and culture, and deliver it to as many audiences, hearts, and souls as possible. And so if you think about museums, they're the underpin for society. They're, they're the protectors of our culture, of our humanity. And it's there to be shared with the public. But in many ways, when they're protectors of the past, it's hard to look to the present and future for some organizations. And so I've dedicated myself and my company, QZAM, to helping these organizations succeed in the digital age. And we're proud to have worked with over 175 organizations, ranging from MoMA to the White House on various digital initiatives. Now today, I'm going to speak specifically about our work in augmented reality. Two years ago, we had the great opportunity of working with the Perez Art Museum down in Miami, Florida, on what was the first ever AR-based art installation in the world. It was no physicality, 100% through the lens of your device. And this was also the first instance of Apple's AR kit being used in a cultural capacity. So for this work, we really wanted to tie it back. We had been working with this organization and wanted to make sure that anything that we did was directly aligned with their mission statement. We did not want to use technology for technology's sake. So looking at that, this is a pretty cool organization down in Miami. They work in contemporary art, and they really wanted to embrace creative innovation. So what does that mean? We worked at this and, and really you know, looking at how new technologies influence not only how culture is displayed and, and consumed, which is how AR has historically been used in the cultural dynamic. You know, you hear examples of I walk up to the Mona Lisa and this happens, or I walk up to this, you know, 18th century portrait and the, the young man or woman jumps out of the frame. We didn't want to do that. That's been done so many times before, and we wanted to create something completely new. So we look solely at how culture is produced in this example. So we worked with an artist named Felice Grodin. She creates these semi-abstract figures that explore the idea of invasive species in and around the area of Miami and urban environments. And we took that into a scale that would be impossible to reproduce in a way that could be iterated on day in and day out, depending on how people interacted with it. So to create something that was about 30 feet, place it in this space, was really remarkable. To update the skins and the animation of this structure was something that, of course, wouldn't be possible physically. And it created this new you know, bonding between the education staff, the curatorial, the artist, the director. Everybody had all hands on ship to, you know, to really uh, put as much energy behind this as possible. And what was really excited was this work evolved. It became a showpiece during the most recent Art Basel Miami back in December. Uh, the New York Post said it was a do not miss piece and it was a little psychedelic, uh, but it made its way into a major art fair, which was fantastic. Uh, perhaps one of the first AR-based pieces of its kind down in Miami. Um, that work got a lot of attention, both in the tech world, as well as the cultural and art world, as well as local, for, what it, you know, for the conversation that was starting around uh, new arts being created. And there was a little bit of you know, STEAM component. It became an educational anchor for that organization to involve their community and see you know, behind the curtain of what was created. We had the opportunity to work on a piece. This, you know, we're going to take a couple steps looking back into the past. This is uh, Gustav Klimt, the famed Austrian painter. You might know his work, uh, The Kiss, or Portrait of Adele, or Tree of Life. He happens also to be, fun fact, Oprah Winfrey's favorite artist. Um, and he loves cats. We had the opportunity to work, uh, you know, it's the, it's the 100 year anniversary of the death of some of the greatest Austrian and Viennese uh, modernists, so Egan Schiele and Gustav Klimt. And so in conjunction with the Pioneers Festival, 
which is one of the largest European startup and tech uh, conferences, and the Museum of Applied Arts in Vienna, this anchor organization, we took a look at what we could do to really uh, take one of the existing works and bring it to life in a completely different dimension, a completely different scale, and have a different dialogue around it. So Tree of Life, as you see in its original form, and then now people in Vienna had the opportunity to plant their Tree of Life across the variety of green spaces and parks that the beautiful city of Vienna has. So here you can see in front of the Imperial Hofburg Palace, Gustav Klimt's Tree of Life brought to life. Um, moving on, and something very close to home, you know, we're based in Boston, Massachusetts, we're here in Cambridge. Back in March of last year, uh, strike the uh, 28 year anniversary of the heist at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum, which is one of the greatest you know, museums we have here in the States, certainly in our city of Boston. And so 28 years ago, two men you know, dressed up as police officers broke in and stole works of art equating to the greatest art heist in the history of the world. And so when Apple's AR kit 1.5 came out, we were really mesmerized by some of the things you could do with on-device image recognition and vertical surface detection. And my colleague Dan was like, no, it would be really cool to do. Put the stolen art back in the frames at the Gardner. So we're tinkering around with the idea, you know, a couple weeks before what we learned was the anniversary, went over and were able to, you know, make this thing happen. And people are coming up to us every walk of life saying, are those the works? Are those the stolen works? Uh, security guards, Needless to say, we're very confused by what was going on, um, but we were able to do it with such accuracy and fidelity that people were just kind of mesmerized by that. And this created a pretty interesting dialogue that made its way as a feature into Wired Magazine about augmented reality transforming museums and how it aligned with the mission statement or how it opened up a conversation around permissionless innovation, who owns the public space, all things that we were really excited to you know, have our part in sparking. And so this particular projects and others that we did had been written about, you know, hacking the heist in over 150 publications around the world, lots in Russia, not giving any hints, lots in China, and not giving any hints of where those stolen artworks might be. But it was really interesting to see uh, the conversation that it did spark, whether it be around repatriating works, decolonizing the museum, uh, and things of that nature. Um, Art, Artnet News said that we might be able to find the work and the FBI didn't, and I don't think that's the case, but you know, flattered nonetheless. And then back you know, to some of the things we're exploring philosophically and as part of our product is if we think of the world as a book, then AR is the digital magnifying glass. If we can augment the world of culture around us, we can give you know, light to these stories that are unknown, we can give more meaning, we can make them more accessible. You know, why is it that I walk up to a work of art and then have to run up and read the label, which is only in one language and too small and my eyes can't read them, when all of that could be made available, made more accessible, and made dynamic uh, for everybody who walks through. So this idea that the world is annotated is something that we're really excited about and have incorporated into our core product to you know, bring those topics to light. And we, I don't know why it zoomed in here, but we did some research uh, which showed that nine out of 10 people found that this made their experience more exciting, uh, new and exciting. Uh, it was a new way to learn. People felt that the art was more relevant and that it enhanced your experience. So in an age, in a day and age, when museums are fighting in relevance, thank you, we feel that augmented reality has the potential to become a new lens, to make the world works more exciting, to add more context, to add more information, and help people see themselves in the works that are in front of them. So we're really confident that augmented reality is this new lens, and we're excited about the work that we've been able to partake in. Thank you so much. I'm Brendan Sieco.